What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel Messianic Me TV. For today's video, I'm going to springboard out of the topic that we just spoke about in my last video, which was actually a live stream. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome. It's going to cover a couple of the same points, but I want to expound on it just a little bit. But before we go ahead and dig into the video, if you're not yet part of the family, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Because in this channel, we talk all things Torah, Halakha, Jewish thought, and more. If you end up enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it really does help the video and the channel. And of course, if you end up enjoying this video and you feel that it's share worthy, make sure you share it with your friends and family. All right, let's go. All right, fam, just as a little recap, in our last video, we talked a little bit about the relationship between the Sinai Covenant and the New Covenant that was instituted by Yeshua. In it, we spoke about the intertwined nature and the inseparable nature between the commandments given in each covenant and the covenant itself. Additionally, I presented a logical argument as to why I personally believe that we cannot just simply translate the commandments from the Old Covenant into the New Covenant. And just to bring that point up again, because we're going to need it later in this video, is this. We begin with the premise that declares that God is a just and fair God. And of course, because of that, we can determine that any commandments that are given to us by God are commandments that we are able to keep. And if we aren't able to keep any one of these commandments, could be for one of these two reasons. Number one, the commandment that he gives us is just impossible to keep. Or number two, the reason why we would be unable to keep a command is because we are seduced into disobedience by the impetus of our flesh. Now, analyzing our first premise where we declare that God is in fact a just and fair God, we can deduct logically that the only true reason why we would be unable to keep a commandment is because of option number two, which is that because of the Yetzer Hara, or the impetus of the flesh, we are seduced into disobedience, and that's why we're unable to keep a command. But as we mentioned in our last video, we could not say that number one could be an option, because to do so would be suggesting that God is a liar. And this may sound drastic, but this is in fact what it would be saying, because in the scriptures, through the writings of Moshe, we are told that any commandment that God gives us are commandments that we are able to keep, and we can see that in the book of Devarim. Now, as we proceed in this video, I think it's only right that we determine what Torah actually means. The word Torah actually means instruction. So throughout this video, you may hear me using these two words interchangeably. With that in mind, I think it's also right that we determine what Torah is not. Torah does not mean the commandments given by Moshe in the Sinai Covenant at least not necessarily. We can verify this claim as we walk through biblical history and see that even before the covenant that was mediated by Moshe, there was a godly standard through which those who were in a relationship with the Creator would live by. A great example of this is Abraham Avinu, Abraham. We can see in the book of Bereshith or Genesis chapter 26 verse 5 that Abraham would walk according to the commandments, the statutes, and the laws that were given by God. And that word right there translated as a law, guess what it is? Torah. And while we may not know exactly what these commandments, statutes, and laws were, we can definitely and with confidence say that these were not the exact same ones that Moshe received. At least not in their entirety. But now let's go ahead and jump into the New Covenant. Many have said, including myself in the past, that now, even though we are in the New Covenant, we are still bound to those commandments or the Torah that was given to Moshe in Sinai. But I think that logically and with the use of the same argument that I provided previously, that just simply can't be true. Now, of course, there's no lack of arguments over this in the internet. And many of the scriptures that are used to support this claim include things like Matthew chapter 5, Acts 15, Psalms 119, 1 John 3, 4, the book of James or Yaakov. However, context proves that these scriptures are not actually trying to portray that message. 
And I used to give that argument myself. I use these very same scriptures. However, if you read through the books themselves, not just verses, not just a chapter, but the whole book, and then the whole Brihadasha together, you will see that the message that we're being given is actually quite different. Now, I believe that part of the reason why many want to hold on to that claim, including myself, is the fact that there is a type of fear that has developed over this message. I used to be afraid to try to say that Yeshua brought something new in the New Covenant. Now, as for me personally, some of those reasons were because of rabbinical interpretations of what Torah is. Other reasons could be things like misinformation. And if you look at history post the Brih Hadashat, things like the Didache, if you look at the Apostolic Fathers like Clement of Rome, Ignatius of Antioch, Polycarp, and more, you will see that this was never the actual message. But then we get to the question, so no Torah? But the answer actually is, yes Torah. However, as we were able to verify before, just because we do have a Torah does not mean that it's the same one that Moshe received as part of the Sinai Covenant. So then, what is the Torah that those that are part of the New Covenant are supposed to keep? Yeshua, our Messiah, gives us a hint to this as he's having a conversation with the Perushim, the Pharisees, and they asked him which one of the commandments is the greatest. And he replied by saying the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. He said that the main commandment is, of course, recognizing that there is one God and that we're supposed to love him with all that we are. And he said that the second commandment or the next greatest commandment was similar to it, and that was to love our neighbors. But as his ministry progresses, we see the depths of what this actually really means. As a matter of fact, we can see in the book of Yohanan chapter 13 that he expounds on this by saying that he gives us a new command, and that is to love one another as he loved us, and that by that all men will know that we are his disciples. And in the same way that Israel was to be a light to the nations surrounding it, we are to be a light to all the nations of the world. And we don't just see this message right there in the book of Yohanan. We see this in 1 John, Romans, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Peter. As a matter of fact, you can see it all throughout the Brit Hadasha. If you can just read the whole thing in its pure context and historical background, it's pretty easy to see that the new Torah that we are supposed to live by is the Torah of loving God and loving people. Now, if you're at all like me and if you've thought the same thoughts that I've thought, I used to think, wait a second, just a loving, this just sounds so new age. It, without depth, there's no real ground to stand on. Anybody could define love. So I think that's actually one of the reasons why I never wanted to admit to the fact that this was in fact the Torah that we are supposed to walk by. But again, through a study of the Barik Hadashah, we could see that it's not arbitrary, that it's not just random, and it's not just left up in the air to define what love is. If we look at the words of Yeshua, what is known as the Sermon on the Mount, we get an excellent example of what love really means. But we can see other examples if we look at the writings of the apostles themselves. If we go ahead and look at writings like the Didache, we get the exact same message. Of course, there are commandments as well that go beyond what we would typically imagine as love. One of the best examples is the commandment we get from Yeshua in the book of Yohanan chapter 6. This is what is known as the bread of life discourse, where we're commanded to consume his body and blood through the blessed wine and bread. And there are other such commandments right there in the Barik Hadashah. And perhaps I'll do a video later on to detail more into what these specific commandments are. But I think now we can identify that we do still have a Torah to live by. It's just like Abraham, not the same one that Moshe received. But we have a specific one set for us as members of the Barik Hadashah, the New Covenant. Now, I'm assuming many of you might still have some questions. What about Shabbat? What about the feasts? What about kosher laws? All of these things. If you look again through this video and my previous one, which I'll link here, you'll see where those commandments actually stand. But to put it simply, we are not bound by the commandments given to Moshe. 
but we are bound to the commandments that are part of the Brit Hadasha. However, if you do have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. But of course, keep in mind that this is not a platform to have debates and fight about it. We're brothers and sisters in Messiah trying to learn together. So let's have a civil conversation. Let me know your thoughts down there. In any case, my friends, I hope that this video was a blessing to you and let's continue the conversation. I see that as I've been making these videos, starting at the one where we talked about the temple, the sacrifice and the high priest, there has been kind of a theme going along. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to keep going and going. So with that being said, I hope that this video was a blessing to you. All right, everyone, have a blessed week. Shalom.